morning and welcome. We're glad that you're here. And we look forward to lifting up praise together. So hopefully you're coming in, finding a seat, saying hello to those who are with you, or maybe even just saying hello to the Lord this morning. Let's sing together. Cause 
lift this up together one more time. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one love. My heart's Let's sing that out together. Jesus. 
suffering, Lord, I will remember what Calvary has bought for me, both now and forever. Lord, we proclaim that goodness. You are good. And now in these moments, we call to mind the ways that you have been good to us. Can we take a moment and reflect on that? Knowing that God is good and knowing the situations and the things you've walked through this past week. Where have you seen God's goodness? Maybe even in a hard thing. Where could you see and trust that God is good, he was good, he's going to continue to be good. Let's take some moments and reflect on that. Where have you seen God's goodness and trusted His in his goodness? One of the deep convictions of my life is that God is good and he can only be good. It is not in his nature to be anything other than good. He is good and he can only be good. So even when it's hard, he's good. Even when he's quiet, he's good. 
even when it seems like he didn't show up, he's good. Even when it seems like he's been absent, he's good. And it takes a large measure of faith and a large measure of trust on our part to continue forward on some days because it is hard. But we know the one thing we can take to the bank is that God is good. And he can only be good and he can only do good. And so, Lord, for the ways that we might be um, struggling with understanding some things, for some ways that we might be struggling and confused. Would you implant deep within us this faith and this trust in the fact that you are good? And it's more than a fact, it's a truth. The truth that you are good. Lord, it was a blessing to sing that to you today. So let's end by singing it together one more time. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so God's people said, Amen. Amen. He is good. And it was a pleasure to be together this morning. Thank you again for joining us. Good morning. It's great to be with you today, and um, I'm just excited to be able to bring the message. And my name is Keith Dre. I'm the pastor of Connect Groups here at Grove City Alliance Church. And I don't know if it's the same for you, but for me, um, it's always been great being a, a part of a group. And, and growing up in high school and in college, one of the things that I was a part of was uh, sports teams, um, especially soccer. That was my my favorite sport, and and I just loved playing soccer, and I loved being a part of that, that tight-knit group of, of guys. In high school, we had a group of guys that there was about nine of us that all went through same grade together, all the way up through senior high, and we did everything together, um, not just playing soccer, but outside of that sport as well. And then in college, I remember one story my, my freshman year, and uh, we to away games, we just took two vans, and one was considered the juniors and seniors, kind of like the upperclassmen van, and the other one was for the rest of us, freshmen and sophomore. And there was one time that uh, I was getting on the one bus, and one of the seniors said, hey, Keith, ride with us. And so I get on that van, and uh, 
And another freshman comes to get on the van and they all start screaming at him saying, freshman, freshman, get off. So he gets off and he's looking at me and they said, well, he's not really a freshman. And it just made me feel great inside, like that feeling of, oh man, I belong to this group. And, and we just have that feeling, that, that desire to belong. And we're connected for that. We're created for that connection. But there's also been times in my life where I felt very alone. Um, and in fact, you know, if we're honest, some of the hardest times in our lives is where we feel completely isolated. Maybe you're going through a tough situation and you look around and there's no one there to really support you. Or maybe you have something great to celebrate and no one's there to join with you in that celebration. Or maybe have you ever been in a room that's full of people and yet you feel completely alone? Right now, going through this season of this pandemic, people are feeling more alone than ever. This, this social distancing that, that they're calling it, it makes you withdraw because you're worried, you're not sure, and, and you're feeling isolated. But you see, God's desire for you, God's desire for us, his greatest plan and purpose for you is that you would never be alone. That's what he wants for you, that you would never be alone. You see, he created us. He created us with this desire to be connected. And, and that's going to be kind of our, our thought for the, today. The, the main point for today is that we're created for connection. But then yet we drift toward isolation. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you for this morning. And I, I pray that as, as we meet together online that you would speak, that you would move, that uh, we would hear your words in a real and specific way this morning. And we ask this in your precious name. Amen. We're created for that connection, but we drift toward isolation. It's so common. We see this in our lives. God created us to have a connection with him, to have a connection with each other. And yet today it's so natural to just drift towards isolation. Now, we're all watching online right now, and you're on the other side of that screen, but I want you to know this today, that you're a part of this church. In this moment, you're a part of our church, and God is building his church. And we know that the church is not just a building, the church is a people. It's you, it's me, together, and he's putting us together. He's building his church. In fact, Scripture says this in Ephesians chapter 2, Verses 19 through 22, it says, that's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here and what he is building he used the apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God, all of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home. This is a place where it doesn't matter what your background is, doesn't matter what your past looks like, doesn't matter the color of your skin or the magnitude of your sin. You can belong here. He goes on to say you belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all. He used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation, and now he's using you fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. See, you're a stone, I'm a stone. He's putting us together, he's building his church, stone by stone. We're created for that connection, for fitting together, but we drift, we drift toward isolation. You see this in social media, right? Social media is a great tool. It can be a great thing. And that's why you'll post a picture, right, of, of your hairy legs on a beach, and you'll hashtag it all natural, hashtag it vacation, 
And what happens? You post something, and then every two minutes you go back and see who's liked it. How many likes did you get? Who's put a heart by it? And we want to share our lives. We're longing for that connection. We want to share our lives with each other. And yet, many times, social media drives us towards isolation. Because what happens when you look at someone else's highlight reel? Maybe you start to feel jealous. Maybe you start to feel envious. Maybe you're having FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. Um, It's actually now a noun in our dictionary. And it drives you crazy that these emotions are building up, that other people are doing things that you wish you could do, and it drives you toward isolation. And when you're feeling this way, you know, you may be agreeing with me right now, but do we talk about it? No. When was the last time you went up to somebody and said, hey, I'm feeling really jealous about what I saw on social media? Instead, it drives us toward isolation, where we keep how we are feeling, all of our emotions bottled up. But here's the thing, as Christians, as followers of Christ, we're called to fight this drift towards isolation. And and that's what we're going to do. We're going to fight this drift. And when you fight the drift, you begin to live the life that God has called you to live. And let me tell you, this is a fight worth fighting. This is a battle worth winning. This is a fight that we do not fight alone. We fight together. We fight with God on our side. And and so I want to talk this morning to you about three ways that we can fight this drift. And, And the first one is this, is that to help fight this drift, we need to remember the faithfulness of God. Everybody needs God in their lives. See, the most important connection you were created to have is your relationship with God. When you surrender your life to Jesus, you enter into a relationship with the Heavenly Father, and that's the most important connection you're supposed to have. When you walk with God, guess what? He walks with you. In your life, you're going to face tough times. When you're wandering through the wilderness, God walks with you. When you're going through challenging situations, God promises to never leave you, and he shows you his faithfulness. When you feel like you're drifting toward isolation, you have to fight the drift by remembering the faithfulness of God. The Bible tells us in Joshua about the Israelites. These are God's people. And the Israelites had been delivered from Egypt from slavery, and they were given a land, the promised land. God told them, I'm going to give you a land that flows with milk and honey. And so they went after that promise. But because of their stubbornness, because of their disobedience, they wandered through the wilderness for 40 years, just wandering around, drifting, basically. Finally, 40 years later, they stand at the banks of the Jordan River with the promised land just across the river. And all they have to do now is cross, walk across to take the promised land that God has for them. And this is such a big deal. This is important. It's a big day, and everything is coming together. And it's so important that God tells Joshua, who's leading the people right now, he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take 12 stones out of the river, and I want you to place them as a memorial to remember my faithfulness, to remember that I delivered you, to remember that I'm a God who walked with you through all of this time. I'm the God that set you free. Remember my faithfulness. And in the story in Joshua chapter 4, near the end, starting with verse 20, you read this. It was there at Gilgal that Joshua piled up the 12 stones taken from the Jordan River. Then Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes and kept it dry until were until you were all across, just as he did at the Red Sea when he dried it up until all had crossed over. He did this so all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful, and so you might fear the Lord, your God, forever. God is a faithful God. He always provides a way for us. God's building his church stone by stone. It's you, it's me, together. He created us for connection, and yet we drift. We drift toward isolation. 
but we need to fight that drift by remembering God's faithfulness. Now, I do want to take a moment because I recognize that there may be some of you who are out there when you think about these stories, you think that's great, that's a, just a great memorial to remember God's faithfulness, but the truth is that you don't see that in your life, or maybe it's hard to remember God's faithfulness. But I want to encourage you to look back at the difficult situations in your life and ask God where he was during those times. And I guarantee you, he will show you how he was faithful and how he was there with you during whatever you were going through. Maybe it was divorce. Maybe it was the loss of a loved one, loss of a job. Sometimes it's hard to see God's faithfulness, but he is always there. Another way that we can help keep from drifting toward isolation is we need to be, you rely on God's people. So you remember God's faithfulness, but you also rely on God's people. You see, we all need others in our lives. Everybody needs somebody. You need somebody that you can vent to. You need somebody that won't judge you, but you need somebody that has good judgment. See, it's not just about having people in your life. It's about having the right people in your life. The difference between where you are today and where God wants you to be depends on having the right people in your life. Now, there, there's a, a quote out there, and, and if you go through online, um, it gives credit to a lot of different people that said this quote. So this morning, you can give credit to me that I said this quote. And it says this, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Proverbs 13, 20 says this, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Good people when you rely on good people, they'll help you remember the faithfulness of God. You need someone to lean on, someone to be there for you. But you need those right, you need the right people. Some of you here today, you just need to hear this. There may be a relationship that you need to let go. You may need to hit that block button on somebody or that unfollow button. You need the right people in your life. Proverbs 14 Verses 7 and 8 say this, Stay away from fools, for you won't find knowledge on their lips. The prudent understand where they are going, but fools deceive themselves. You need the right people in your life. And you might say, okay, I need the right people. How do I find the right people? And I just want to let you know that there, there's two ways that uh, you can do this as part of our church, and if you're listening online and, and you're not part of this church, but you're part of another church, here's two ways that you can do it at your own church. First one is this, is, is start serving. Start serving, very simple. We have many different ways that you can be a part of serving here at our church. You can be a part of our children's ministry, of our youth ministry. As we come back inside, as we've been enjoying the outside and, and God's creation, as we come back inside, we're going to need greeters. We're going to need people to help seating people. There's a lot of different ways that you can be involved and, and to serve. And, and what this simply does is it gets you around other people that are walking in the same direction as you want to be walking. So I encourage you to see how you can serve, how you can be a part of the church and minister here at Grove City. One of the other ways is to get in a connect group, which is our, our small groups. You need to be in community. You need to meet consistently with people that are going to encourage you, that are going to hold you accountable. We encourage you to get into a connect group. We're going to be launching these in, in a couple of weeks. And what we're really looking at doing starting in October, the middle of October, is, is having connect groups that are going to be sermon-based. And what that means is that you'll listen to the sermon, you'll be here for the sermon, or you can watch it online, and then you'll get together as a, a group and you'll dig a little bit deeper. And especially you'll take that part of what might I do with that and see how can I apply it this week. It's getting together with like-minded people and just seeing how can we disciple each other? How can we pray for each other? How can we grow with each other? 
And I encourage you to be watching for the announcements for that, to sign up for a group in your area and be a part of that. We may even have some who just say, you know what, we're going to watch the sermon online together, and then we're going to go through the questions together. And so we encourage you to hop into a connect group. One of the other things that we have, we call it one of our deeper life intensives, and it's on spiritual rhythms of, of dis, spiritual rhythms and disciplines. And basically, you're going to be put into small groups, and, and then through a, an app, you, you get to experience different types of spiritual disciplines and going through those and, and talking with each other through the app. You're not actually meeting physically but on a weekly basis, you're discussing and you're growing and you're discipling one another. You can also find this on our website and sign up for that right now. And I encourage you to, to be a part of that. You can do both because the one is, is at your own schedule and the other one you'll have a specific time. But I encourage you to be a part of a connect group. Louis Giglio, who is the pastor of Passion City Church in Atlanta, Georgia, says this. It's easy to get lost in a crowd. It's easy to show up a few times a month at a big gathering and feel like I was at church or I am at church or I go to that church. Sometimes you can show up and get lost in the crowd. Then when there's no crowd, you're just lost. And we've been experiencing that with this pandemic. But then when there's no crowd, you're just lost. But here's the thing. It's hard to get lost in the crowd when, you, when you're found in a circle. And our connect groups are those circles, so we encourage you to be a part of a connect group. And you see, I, I promise you that if you take one of these steps, if you choose to serve or you choose to be in a connect group, you're going to look back and you'll see that this was a stone. This was helping you to a memorial and, and remembering, okay, this is how God is faithful. God's putting us together. He's building his church. He's connecting us stone by stone. We're created for connection, but oftentimes we drift toward isolation. So, one, we need to remember the faithfulness of God to fight this drift toward isolation. We also need to rely on God's people. And then thirdly, we need to also release the power of your story. Release the power of your story. You see, everybody needs God, as we've talked about. Everyone needs somebody but also somebody needs you. Somebody needs you. You see, you have a story, and your story has power. There's a powerful story in the Bible in 1 Samuel 17 of David and Goliath. And I know many of you may have heard the story, but just to give you a quick rundown, Goliath is a mighty warrior. He's a giant. He comes up and he's defying God's people defying the one true living God. He challenges the army of Israel to fight, and nobody wants to fight him. David shows up, a young shepherd boy, which I love because it just shows it doesn't matter how old you are. You have a story, and your story has power. Whatever your age is, he shows up and he says, I'll fight this guy. I'll take him on. Shows up, and what does he do? He picks up five smooth stones from the river, he puts them in his shepherd bag, and he takes one of those stones then and puts it in his sling, swings it around, and launches it and hits it, Goliath, in the head. Goliath goes down. David walks over, takes Goliath's sword, beheads the giant. He declares victory over the enemy for his people. And, and here's what I love about the story is Goliath wasn't David's personal giant, but he wasn't maybe defying David personally, but he was defying David's people and David's God. And what David said was, you know what? I have a story. I've conquered lions. I've conquered bears. I've done this, and God has been with me, and I can conquer this giant that is giving you problems because of the story that I had. And, and it's the same with us. We have a story, and it has power, that it may be a story that someone else needs to hear so that you can help them conquer their giant. And we've been on this topic of, of, of stones, and you know, there, there, there's maybe times in your life that were painful, those moments in your life that hurt so much. And you know, when a, a rock falls into a river, a lot of times it's sharp, it's jagged. 
And as it rolls through the river, it hits other rocks, and those rocks chip away at it. And then at some point, it might fall over a waterfall, and it will land at the bed of the river, and the constant flow of water acts like sandpaper and eventually makes it smooth. And that's what makes that jagged stone smooth is that water running over it, the other rocks hitting it. So maybe all those painful, all those jagged moments in your life that have been washed by the grace of Jesus become a powerful tool in your life. Maybe that divorce that almost broke you becomes a powerful story in your life that you can share with others who may be going through divorce. That addiction that almost took you out becomes something that you can use to help another person. The abandonment you felt, maybe your parents left you and you wonder even as an adult, why didn't they want me? That becomes a part of your powerful story. The death of a child, a pain that no parent should ever feel, it becomes a story for you. You see, your story has power. And you need to release the power of your story because perhaps your story could be the stone that takes down someone else's giant. I remember when my wife and I lost a son. My wife was pregnant and she got very sick and was dealing through IVs and different things and, and getting closer and closer to the end of the pregnancy. Um, but then we knew something was wrong and and. She went in, and uh, the child had no heartbeat anymore. And so she had to give birth to Micah, and, uh, and he wasn't alive. And that was a, a man, you talk about a, a jagged stone. You talk about a, a pain. And, and I remember personally just saying, you know, God, there's so many people out there who don't want kids. We wanted this child. You know, God, this and that. And, and even saying, I'm, I'm a pastor. I, I'm in ministry for you, and yet you allow this to happen. And it was a, a painful moment. And, and the, incredibly, with that story, I, I worked with youth at the time, and I had already planned the following week my lesson. And uh, as a youth pastor, you inherit strange things. And one of the things that I had inherited was a body bag. And I had already planned on doing a lesson, doing different scripture, and then having kids letting go of things. And as they wrote them down on papers, they would come up and put them in the body bag, meaning that they had let go of them, that they were now dead, and they were no longer a part of their lives. And, and God used that, that there's, I filled up a whole card with stuff and was able to let go of it. And now with that story and just having the experience of losing a child, God has used that, that I've been able to walk other people through that experience. And you each have a story. And it could be through victories that you've had that you're able to encourage people but, or also painful moments, but that you've seen where God has been faithful. And that pain you've gone through is not in vain. God can use it. You see, when you walk with God and you walk with his people, what he does is he brings you opportunities to use your story, to release the power of your story. And when you release the power and share what God has done in your life, you can help take down the giants in other people's lives. We're created for connection, and he's building his church stone by stone. Perhaps today you'll remember the faithfulness of God. You'll rely on his people, and you'll release the power of your story. And when you do that, you will never walk alone. You will always have God, and you will always have people walking with you. And perhaps that's exactly why God brought you here today to hear all that he has for you. So what might you do with that? Or remembering God's faithfulness. Maybe one of the things that you can start doing as a family, I'll be back in a second, is maybe you start to make a memorial outside your house. Maybe when you see God's faithfulness, when you see all the incredible things you do, is you take a landscaping stone, you put it down, you just put the year on it. Maybe one word or something, and you say, you know what? We're going to start remembering God's faithfulness and building a memorial to that, that every time I walk outside, I'll see this and I'll remember, man, God was faithful that year. God was faithful in that event. And maybe your kid's dad, mom, what's that stone for? And you can share the story of God's faithfulness. That's something you can do as, as far as remembering God's faithfulness. Also a reminder, rely on God's people. 
Let me get back in the screen here. Rely on God's people. Join a group. Join a small group. Join a connect group. Be willing to serve. Find out what opportunities there are to serve. And also realize that you have a story to tell, a powerful story that can help others take down their giants. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I come before you and I thank you for who you are and all that you've done for us. And I just want to pray specifically right now for those who maybe just need to remember your faithfulness. I ask that you would bring to them a specific time, a specific event where you were faithful to them. Let them see it as a clear picture of how you showed up even when they thought that you weren't there. Help them to remember your faithfulness, Lord. Or maybe there's those who need to rely on God's people that maybe they need to get the right people in their lives. Give them the boldness. Give them the courage to maybe end those relationships. Give them the courage to maybe step out and serve. Give them the courage to maybe find a group to be a part of that can encourage them that they could be moving in the right direction with, Lord. And I pray for those who, who know that they have a story to share but have been maybe too scared to share it. I ask that you would give them the boldness and the encouragement to share it. And I ask this in your precious name. Amen. Now, for those of you who have been watching this, one of the most important connections that you were created to have is a relationship with God. And I want you to know that God loves you. And maybe you've been sitting here saying, you know, I, I kind of understand that, that I'm created for connection, but I don't really know who God is, but he loves you. And, and, and yet he loves you so much, but sin separates us from God. And, and what that means is basically you've sinned, I've sinned, we've all sinned and we fall short of God's standards. And our sin separates us from this holy God. And yet God loved us so much that he did something for us. He sent his son Jesus to this earth who lived a sinless life. And he died on the cross so that you and I could be forgiven of our sins. They put him in a tomb. And and guess what they did? We've been on the topic of stones. They covered it with the stone. But three days later, that stone was rolled away. Jesus was resurrected. And in his resurrection, you and I could have new life. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us. And it also says that if you call on the name of Jesus, he will save you. You will be saved. You'll be forgiven. And and I want you to know that you can't clean yourself up. You can't make yourself right and then come to God. You just need to come to God just as you are. And you let him do the work. So if that's you, and you say, you know what? I'm ready to turn away from my sins. I'm ready to stop walking on my own. I need God in my life. I'm ready to surrender to him and receive forgiveness for all of my sins. If that's you, we're going to pray together. And and I just want you to pray this prayer along with me right now. Let's pray. And it says, Father God, I declare that Jesus is your son, that he died and rose again so that I could be forgiven. Today I give you my life. I surrender my heart. Forgive me and make me new. Overwhelm me with your spirit so that I can follow you and serve others. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your new life. Now you have mine. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, I encourage you to let someone know. If you're online, you can even comment, I prayed that prayer this morning. It's the most important and exciting decision that you can make because now you know that you have eternal life. It's been great being with you this morning. Pray that you have a good week.